And let me cut this music down. I'm going to keep that in the background just a little bit, just a little bit. And I just want to go ahead and introduce myself. I am Adrienne Capricorn Tigress of astrology, a look inside.com. And it is Saturday, October 19th, 2024. And I am here to talk about the things that are happening in the world, October 19th, 2024. I come earlier and I started talking and then something went awry. And so I was afraid I was going to end up losing everything. So I stopped and restarted. So I'll probably upload clips of whatever I said the first time. Um, but I wanted to come back and start over so I can actually do something here with everybody. Also, I've got to apologize. I'm looking like 90 miles of bed road, 90 miles of bed road. Uh -huh. I, I shouldn't say that I'm going to take that out of the universe. I look beautiful. I'm gorgeous. I'm wonderful. There is just, there's a loveliness about me, an essence of loveliness that just exudes from my being regardless. But in reality, I have been aging at a rapid pace. <laughs> That's the way I feel. Like I'm looking at myself lately like, what? But I've also lost a lot of weight. And so that's probably why it's looking, you know, plus I'm sounding more like B. Arthur. My voice has gotten more 50 or 60 years. Like it sounds like an older woman now. When I talk, I talk like an older woman. This has all happened within the last year. Like I'm just telling you, there's changes afoot in 2024. Now I think it's because of, you know, what's been going on with Pluto. And um, let's go ahead and talk really briefly about what's going on with the planets. I pulled up where the planets are and uh, I do want to talk about that. So let's do that. The first thing I want to talk about is right now the sun is at 27 degrees of Libra. 27 degrees of Libra. And the funny thing is, you know, we've got Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And um, we've got Mars at 24 degrees of Cancer. Now, the crazy thing is that these are all pulling away from what was a grand cardinal square. Oh, yeah. It was a grand cardinal square. Not to be confused with a normal square or T square or, you know, anything like that. We're talking a grand cardinal square. And um, I'm a double Capricorn with a progressed Aries rising. And oh, did I ever feel it? Oh, yeah. Um, there's a lot of other things that probably cost it, but I didn't have access to my bank account, or my major bank account that I use for 18 days. Mm hmm. I, at first, I had almost a nervous breakdown. I screamed. At, it's probably why my voice is so rough. But I yelled. I cried. I screamed. I did everything. I tried to call the bank, PayPal, all the different things you do when you realize you're about to have financial ruin. But there was nothing I could do to stop it. It was a weird moment. Now, I think that all happened because of what's happening with Saturn. And let's talk a little bit about Saturn, shall we? Because Saturn is actually about to get activated right now because the moon is already moved into Gemini. It's at three degrees of Gemini at the moment, which is probably why I came to do some speaking because I have not been making my videos. I have been very cautious about speaking because when I speak, I am speaking my truth. And my truth does not always go along with what other people's truth is, especially right now when we've got this election going and I am definitely anti-Trump. <laughs> it's not so I, I am pro Kamala. Don't get me wrong. I'm 100 percent pro Kamala, but it's more that I'm anti-Trump. I just can't see myself voting for that. Like I. There's nothing in me that will allow it to happen. And um, I'm grateful that we have Kamala, uh, Kamala, 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 like Kamala. 
that we have Kamala to, to choose from. She's an excellent candidate. She's a highly qualified and she's run like probably the best uh, political campaign I've ever seen in my life, raising a billion dollars in like four months. And really just the energy, the hope, the, the ex just the excitement around her campaign has just been beautiful. Her rallies are like concerts. You know, it's amazing. And I feel like when you're looking at her rallies, you're seeing the hope of our nation. Like the people in the rallies, they're excited. They're hopeful. They're, we want this change. It's not like it's being forced upon us. It's something we want, we pray for, we hope for, we, I pray for it. I, I'm still praying because I'm, it's not quite over yet, but I'm excited about the, ex about how well her campaign has done thus far, how well she's done so far. The fact that, because this man, Trump, was up by, what, was it double digits over by at one point? Like there was, they had just about given up hope that he was going to actually win in the end. And um, I feel like, she gave us back our hope because i to me the idea that the only choice would have been someone like him and vance makes me physically ill there's just i mean one of the things i've been very vocal about but i think maybe not so much on youtube but i i'm going to say what i'm going to say now and this is probably going to go wherever i put this but um This man is a, he's not qualified. We're talking about a criminal, a con artist, a grapist, a fraud, someone who tried to fix the last election. There's the hush money trials. There's the Mar-a-Lago case. All these things that we think are going to, he thinks are going to go away if he wins so he can pardon himself and all his criminal friends. But the reality is, if he loses, he will be held responsible for the things that he's done. He wants to hide behind immunity of presidency. And the best thing that we can do is to make sure he never gets to the presidency ever again in our lifetime. Um, it's the only way, first of all, for him to ever face justice, but it's the only way we can protect ourselves because this man has been talking about getting rid of the Constitution, which is something I find deplorable. And I can't even believe it's true. It's like, what? Really? Why? What are you proposing? A concept? We would replace our, our Constitution and then we would lose our three branches of government and I, it, it would just probably be chaos. I think. Um, I I think the one thing that keeps me from Trump, and it it's not that it's a fault of his, but it is because he speaks in racism, he speaks in bigotry, and because he speaks in bigotry, the bigots and the racists have found him. They support him. His, his not I. You know, we say um, not all. What is it? Not all races are Trump supporters, but all, or, or, or do I got it all, all are not all races are Trump supporters, but all Trump supporters are racist or not, or, or vice versa, not all Trump supporters are racist, but all races are Trump supporters. All races are Trump supporters. KKK, white supremacy, the Nazis, whenever they have that, that Trump flag up, they've got their, their Confederate flag up. They got their KKK flag up. They got their Nazi flags up, the, the swastika. I don't want to be on the side of that. I don't want to be on the side of the KKK and the white supremacists and the Nazis. I know instantly that because they're all supporting him, he's just not the right person that I should be voting for.
What surprises me is the number of Blacks and Hispanic that either don't realize they're on the side of the KKK, the white supremacists and the Nazis, or they don't care. Like that one guy in North Carolina who said he wants to own slaves. And I looked at him and I'm thinking, dude, they would take away your rights in a minute and make you a slave. You are definitively Black. You're not going to be a slave owner in that world. You would be a slave. And this is the saddest part. I think some people forget what this is, what bigotry is, what racism is, what misogyny is. My daughter said a lot of what Kamala has been going through is misogynoir. And it is, it's the fact that she's black and a woman and Indian, like she's got multiple things that they can look at and go, oh, well, we don't want that because she's, end quote, that, that, and that. The whole idea that she's, end quote, stupid or unintelligent or dumb makes no sense. She's got a degree in economics, political science, and law. He always talks about, oh, she had to go take the bar exam. Yeah, what about the other degrees? I mean, it's not like we're talking about an idiot here. And even if she was, per se, some kind of fool, then why would she have progressively grown from one position to the next, to the next, to the point where she's running to get your old job? It makes no sense. No, that is not a stupid person. A stupid person would not be doing that. They would not have achieved those things. Have you seen her? In her they're always like, oh, she's stupid. And I'm thinking... Oh, that Brett Barr in a bear interview. I've heard some magazine. So, oh, he did this and that. And I'm like, no, he was exposed for trying to pull a fast one. He talked all over her and she handled herself professionally, considering he was talking all over her. There was nothing she said that indicated she was stupid. There was one thing that they wanted her to ask something about Joe Biden. She wasn't there about Joe Biden. She is running for her own campaign. Any talk about Joe Biden ain't got nothing to do with her campaign or her her path, what her what the future is or what it is she's about. Who cares at this point? We know he's not going to be the president again. I mean, I'm not he at this point he is the president at at the moment and the man is over in Germany. He looked perfectly fine. He, in fact, can I be honest? All that talk about Biden looks like he is in his better faculties than Trump. He sounds like he's in better faculties than Trump. He looks like he's in better faculties than Trump. Trump looks horrible. He's got makeup on as dark as me and you can see the white of his skin next to it. It's disgusting. He looks like he's ill. They've been using puppy pads when he goes out on, on, <laughs> to sit on the stove. The, that's the rumor that he had a puppy pad under him, like to make sure he didn't get stains on the sofa. This man is obviously not fit. And 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 the thing is, it's not just health wise. Like, you know, he wouldn't be the only person that war depends. It's mental. It's dementia. It's whatever he's talking about, this weave that is always about Hannibal Lecter and and, and electricity and windmills and sharks and Things that have nothing to do with nothing. And I don't need that weave. In fact, if you're going to be weaving, I'm, we're going to weave you right on out of the contention for this presidency. We don't need that. We need a man or woman who speaks to, straight. We, need, we don't need talk salad. We know what talk salad is now because we know about narcissists. And he's a malignant narcissist who acts like a malignant narcissist. Even if he wasn't really a malignant narcissist, he certainly acts like a malignant narcissist. So we have no choice but to say so because he's acting like one. And he talks in, in, in talk salad like they do. He does has all the traits of a malignant narcissist. Plus, he's a pathological liar. Why lie like that? I've said this and no one listens when I talk, I guess sometimes, but why lie like that? Why lie so blatantly that it's one, obviously a lie, 
but sometimes he's lying about something that we can prove is a lie like it just happened so when you say it it's that you in, in my opinion you're insulting us you're insulting our intelligence maybe he's gotten so used to his his cult that doesn't question anything that he doesn't realize that he that he expects us all to be silly or or, or death or blind or i don't know like what he did at univision and first of all, he kept saying we when referring to the insurrectionists, which many of us found so distasteful, so distasteful. But it's the idea that he called it a day of love. I watched that. I watched that, that whole, like that whole thing. I watched it in real time. I was mortified. I think I was crying it was hours it wasn't like just a 15 minute thing it was hours long and it started out with that that speech remember they they were showing him at the speech they showed it in real time at least msnbc and cnn i was going back and forth between the channels at that time <coughs> and and although i have not seen anyone replay it there was a moment when i had saw Trump and his boys celebrating and like, you know, popping bottles. And I don't know if that's ever going to come up anywhere, but they were celebrating that. Even now they try to call them patriots and stuff like that. And I'm like, those were freaking domestic terrorists. That's domestic terrorism. When you hear Trump's people, these MAGA cult people, who are threatening people for voting blue, for voting for Kamala, or who say they are, or who wave her flag, or who show any um, interest in anything other than Trump. And they assault, or they insult, or they attack. That's domestic terrorism. We don't need this to continue people this has never been right we've been dealing with this issue since that day when we realized they were willing to storm the capitol and i think since that day i realize whenever i'm dealing with anybody who is supporting that or him that i'm dealing with a potential domestic terrorist i mean I, let me just say this on Facebook. I I am the one woman because I don't see a lot of people uh, posting anything, whether for or against. Um, usually, I am very vocal. I've been very vocal and blue uh, since the moment I learned Kamala was running. Okay, I got excited immediately. It took me like all of fifteen minutes. I I made a video at first where I was upset at Biden for, you know, giving up. And I, at first I was like, oh, is this gonna, is this a coup? But then I thought about it and I'm like, she's gonna win. She's the best person for this job. If he says, I don't think I have it in me to do another four years, we should respect what he's saying. He's over 80. I think now that I look back on it, it was wise. It was a beautiful sacrifice for America because it, why persist in something that you are, if, if you know you're struggling, then you know you're struggling. That's called honesty. This is why I'm upset about Trump because he's obviously struggling. I think to me, Trump looks like he's struggling way worse than Biden ever been struggling. And Biden said, no, I'm not coming back because he realized he's too old. But this other guy who we already fired wants to come back old as dirt, would be the oldest ever. And he doesn't bring anything. He was already the worst president we ever. Someone said there was someone worse than him. I don't know who that was. Who got impeached twice who was a rapist who's got all the felonies and potential court 
trials and judgment and sentencing and look Trump is running for office for president so he doesn't go to jail and I think we all know that if you don't know that it's time you realize that that's why when the, you see the man he doesn't really talk anything like people always say what's uh, Kamala's policy she's always talking about her policy she's always talking about what she's going to do always but he doesn't he doesn't talk about what he because he, he doesn't have anything he's going to do only thing he ever says is he threatens America I'm going to do this I'm going to do that and it's always something that's going to be horrific for America I, that man has not offered a single thing that I've heard of that's going to lead to anything positive or better than what he did the first time and we don't want that that man is literally the the modern day Nero who fiddled when Rome burned why would we want that why would we go back to that what is it that people think they see in that I do believe that people who are voting for him are voting for a myth they're voting for who they want him to be who they thought he was who they hope he could be but you guys that's not who he is and he's already proven before he couldn't live up to that whatever that hero worship is the last time what makes you think he can live up to it now when he's almost 80 years old and really decimating quickly he's like I said I think he's I think he's fading way work faster than Joe Biden I think Joe Biden lived a cleaner life and because of that I think he may have more years of cognancy than what we see here although Trump is speaking loud he's not saying anything he's not even speaking loud anymore have you noticed like even the energy of the, the uh fight is not there it's he's not speaking loud and he's almost like uh, yeah he's trying to make the jokes or whatever but he sounds like a sick man now let's talk about astrology I have said this before about Trump that Pluto was in his sixth house and I said and I I'm gonna stick by it was in a reprieve a brief reprieve while Pluto was retrograde the issue is Pluto is not retrograde anymore and we are seeing a very quick quick decline a super quick decline I think the decline was occurring the whole time but now that Pluto went direct well it's it's in the sixth house it's going to Pluto is in there doing its destruction thing he's not lived well he's been lucky it touched that area and then it backed off but it's going it's stuck now it's in the sixth house and it and when it leaves the six is going into the seventh because he has Leo rising he's not going to be able to get away from it from this this is not good I don't foresee good health or a good anything really because look and let me give you an example of myself Pluto's been in my first house I've almost died several times since Pluto's been in my first house I lost 130 pounds recently but over the time of the 20 years that Pluto's been in my first house I lost three hundred and fifty pounds three hundred and fifty pounds now if you would have told me back in 2013 that I was going to lose three hundred and fifty pounds I would have laughed you out of like if you would have told me 11 years ago don't worry little fat 550 pound woman or whatever you are you're going to lose 350 pounds and you're going to get out of the wheelchair you're going to walk and you're going to dance and you're going to be able to go places and if you would have told me that then I would have laughed at you because I would have never believed it but since 2013 I've, I've gotten out of a wheelchair I walk I dance I've, I've been gotten married it didn't work out well but I did it I can go wherever I want I can do what you know I I'm independent I don't have to have assistant living or anything because I remember back in 2011 12 my daughter was thinking about putting me in assistant living then so 
this Pluto came through my first house and just wiped away the reality of whoever the heck I was. I am not that person anymore. I'm someone altogether different. I, I mean, it's a whole different person uh, completely. I remember her and I see pictures of her, but she was struggling and I barely remember her. So I'm glad Pluto came and wiped it off. Like, let's just start all from, start from scratch. And Pluto does that. That's what I'm realizing. It will take you and start you from scratch. Like I literally needed a blood transfusion to stay alive. They had to go through my juggler. They were so desperate I wasn't going to survive that they were rushing trying to get me this blood transfusion because my blood had congealed and I was dying. I had blood disease. They found out I have a thrombocytopenia, which is a blood disease. But I had to get a complete transfusion. After that, I went through years of, of, of vitamin infusions and um, it's it's been different, you know. Um, right, I've been on Ozempic for a year because of my A1C, um, and I've been battling diabetes since 2007, uh, diabetes too. So this Pluto going through my first house, it 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 reduced me down to rubble, <laughs> to nothing, and then I've had to build myself back up to what I don't know, but at least i'm alive i'm talking i'm working you know here doing what i'm doing with you today but i had to start from scratch from nothing I, nothing of who i was except all of the clothes of course i was like a six x over 500 pounds now i'm between a 12 and a 14. it's a whole different world and so i just want you to understand that in fact the shirt i have on is an 810 so that's a whole different world, isn't it? It's a whole different world. Um, Pluto in his sixth house is going to reduce him to rubble. The, the thing is, you know, he's older. When you're younger, if, if this was happening at a younger time, uh, maybe. But the thing about Pluto, it only goes around every 248 years. So this is fate. Like, do you think it's... It's, it's a mistake that this is in my first house. Obviously, Pluto went through my first house to make me strong. It could have went through any house, but it's in my first. That's, that's not a mistake. It won't be in my first house again, or at least in Capricorn for another 248 years. So this was fated. I believe in certain things are fated. This was fate. And what's going on now with this between the sixth and seventh house for for Trump, that's fate. That's fate. Now, he might be able to rebuild. I mean, who knows? I mean, to what though? I, this is going to be in uh, Aquarius for the next 20 some years. And that would put him well into his 90s. No, it would put him into his hundreds if he would live that long, right? Because he's that old. So that's why I, I think this might not bode well, because he has not lived well uh, as far as eating and drinking and partying, uh, that type of thing. Other than that, you know, that's just my, my take on things. For her, she's in a different place. She's the age of like a child of his. He's old enough to be her father. So she, she's got a whole different tra trajectory. Um, it's different and you can feel it that she's at the she's at a pinnacle and he's not he's not at a pinnacle at this point and you can feel that and um that's what it is now i do uh hope that whatever happens that and it's like wishful thinking but that is people allow a peaceful transfer of power. He is not our president. He has not been our president for the last four years, although they continue to call him that. And I've never taken him seriously as a candidate. I've always just figured this man is running to stay out of prison. I knew that was going to happen. I had a feeling I was going to run out of juice soon. And I hope you can still see me. I tried to have light 
so that it wasn't so dark here and that I didn't lose uh, the light in this corner, but it looks like I'm going to lose the light in this corner. It also looks like I'm losing the timing with my mouth and the, the actual video. So this might be, you know, I might have to make a third recording, I, I guess, maybe uh, for videos, because I don't know if this is going to be recording well enough for the actual reading. But I've said a lot, okay? I, I just want to say a couple more things about where the planets are, if it'll let me do it. So we talked about the sun at 27 degrees of Libra, the moon at three degrees of Gemini. Mercury is at nine degrees of Scorpio. Ooh, it's almost on my midheaven right now. And we got Venus at two degrees of Sagittarius. Still can join my own Venus. And you know, I love Venus and Sagittarius. It, Venus and Sagittarius is such a like, you know, live and let live Venus. It, it really is. It, it's, it's very kind of open-minded. It's the most open-minded Venus of all Venuses. So I do like that it's open-minded. Um, Mars is in Cancer. And it, it just tells me that Mars is a little bit emotional. I think that I'm wary that, you know, uh, that we had the square between the sun and Mars. But I do... Um, at least it's not a grand square right now. And it's just that square. And uh, I guess we'll include Pluto. It's a T square. So, it, which is a lot better than a grand square. So we're doing a little bit better. Um, when I look at these plants and Jupiter uh, right now is retrograding in Gemini at 21 degrees of Gemini. Uh, and uh, Saturn is retrograding at 13 degrees of Pisces. And, you know, it's funny, Mercury and uh, Saturn are actually making a trine to each other. So uh, maybe, it, I hopefully we'll get some clearer thinking uh, from some people. Uranus is at uh, 26 degrees of Taurus and it is also retrograding. That is actually in a trine formation with Mars actually right now. Um, Uranus and Mars are tr uh, trying. Yeah. I don't know how I, f even though they're both Earth planets, I don't know about how I feel about Uranus and Mars in agreement with each other because they're both create havoc if they want to. And so I'm hoping that we don't have anything go into havoc. Like this Uranus is actually retrograding back toward the exact uh, trine with this Mars. And um, Uranus tends to be erratic and Mars tends to be aggressive. I don't want an erratic aggressiveness. So I'm hoping, you know, that they're not in agreement with that. Like we don't want that. That's what we don't want. Um, Neptune also, I think, is feeding the fire because it creates like the sextile in between uh, Saturn and, 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 and Mars. And so it's that that Neptune in Pisces is like, this is my belief system. My belief system might be all screwed up backwards and wrong, but this is my belief system. So I'm going to do this Mars aggressiveness or this, this Uranus Taurus uh, out of the, the blue craziness. Like this is scary in my opinion when I see this, okay? Because I feel like some people might take advantage and be like, yeah, let's, let's do something crazy. And there's no need for it. A Pluto, by the way, in Capricorn is direct, thank God. So it's moving away from it, but it's still technically, in my opinion, in a sextile formation with Neptune too. So, you know, I just want you guys to be careful of doing anything silly. Like I, I hear some of Trump supporters saying all the crazy things that they will do if he doesn't win. Well, have you seen his rallies? The likelihood of the man not winning is is quickly becoming more apparent. Not because anybody's not, uh, you know, uh, doing anything to rig anything. It's that you guys are not even going out to support him at his rallies. I, have you seen the difference in the rallies? So you can't get upset if Kamala has more votes because she's got more people out really boots on the ground 
out there, they're excited. There's an excitement to Kamala's campaign that he does not have. Okay. And it's not there. So you can't get upset if he doesn't get the votes because there's not the same level of excitement that might have once been for him or whatever. Um, I just worry about that because, you know, we've got Chiron uh, retrograding in uh, Aries and the North Node in Aries. And, I, I, you know, running to aggressiveness and fighting and all the arguments and, you know, all those things over this man who is not even qualified is such a waste of energy. I pray you don't do that, people. That's not worth it. It's not. This guy is not worth that. I wish more people understood that we can do better. I believe that regardless that it's worth it to put up with Kamala, no matter what you think about her, for at least the four years, so that we can have a brand new start in four years. Like, at least we get another chance. We get another opportunity to vote because according to what Trump is saying, he wants to be a dictator. We won't even get a chance to vote in four years. Like, we would lose our, our freedom. We would lose our voice. We would lose our constitution. We would lose our Supreme Court. We would lose uh, the ability to make choices and decisions uh, with the Congress and Senate if we don't vote blue, if we don't go in a different direction. You, would, you understand what they say about um, insanity? Insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. If we go back to Trump, because what we've been dealing with since 2016 is Trumpism. It's MAGA. They've gotten into the House. They've gotten into the Senate. They got, they really took over the House, right? And into the Supreme Court because he put the people in. So what we've been dealing with is like a MAGA takeover, a MAGA, like a, a virus, an infection. Well, you don't feed the infection by giving it more infection. It's, that's not going to work. We already see how distorted our politics have become since that man. We've got to fix it. And we the only way we're going to fix it is by giving ourselves at least a breather of four more years. I'm looking at it like that. Like, I don't want to make a decision that's so definitive as choosing a dictator when he's not qualified to be our dictator. That's the first thing. He's not good enough for that role. That's, I just, like, if we're going to have one, just make it someone who's good enough for the role. But the other thing is that we would be stuck then with that, this old man. And he might be like literally so sick that he's not going to live very long because we don't really know what's going on with him. He won't even share his medical records. And we'll be stuck with a dictator like Vance who doesn't know ish. That guy doesn't know anything. He, I have not heard a complete lucid sentence of anything of value that I can even quote or repeat or get down with when it comes to him. I, there's nothing there. It's like emptiness. At least, you know, Walls has said things that has appealed to me. There's nothing there. I get nothing out of them. It's like an empty tank. So we don't want to get stuck with that. That wouldn't be as bad as, I mean, if we were going to go with that route, we should have just had DeSantis then. What the heck? Why would we want something like that? Come on, people. You've got to use your brains now. It's this, I feel like, um, I heard someone else say it, but I tried to re, uh, share that video and TikTok wouldn't let me, but that a vote for Trump is really just a vote for Vance. That it, he's, just, they, he's just a figurehead until they can install Vance. And that's for Project 2025. We don't need that, you guys. This is not good for us. And I think that's all I'm saying. We need to do what's going to be, at least give us a shot. Give us a chance. You, you make decisions that are fateful decisions, that are permanent decisions, that are things that we can't turn around. Because like, give you an example. You elect Trump, right? He then gets to put in more Supreme Court ju judges. That means, first of all, 
will never have any fair decisions made. He'll never face any kind of judgment. But who knows what kind of things they'll end up doing. They could bring back slavery. They could do anything. If, if we don't stop this and nip it in the bud, we are literally about to lose our nation. And the one thing that gets me is the idea that he is so pro Putin. I have been listening to, I am a big fan of the Midas touch. A shout out to the Midas mighty out there. And one of the things that I, they've been talking about is the fact that people in Poland are getting frightened that the idea of Trump coming in because he's so pro Putin, he would instantly do something that would allow Putin to have um you know take over and if he takes over ukraine countries like poland realize they're next because he's not going to just stop at ukraine you know that we're dealing with someone who is like deep into wanting complete power someone like trump right that's why they probably admire each other but he would then do his hitler thing and start taking over europe so I feel like a vote um, for Kamala also <laughs> saves Europe. It's not just saving America. You're saving more than just America. You'd be saving Europe, at least giving them more time to fight or combat whatever this is, because they are looking at another world war. This man wants to barrel through Europe. We can't have that. Because if they fall, we all fall, right? If we fall, they fall. If they fall, we fall. We got to support each other, people. We are not living in a fishbowl or in a vacuum. We are basically all one. And, you know, I'm not trying to get all spiritual on you, although I'm a spiritual life coach. We are all one. And we've got to do what's right for all of us, not just some, not just for elite, not just for white, not just for rich or powerful but for everybody, what works for the sum total of all of us, at least gives us a shot of survival and improvement. But if we just give up and give in and cave in to what is obviously not going to work out in our benefit in the long run, then we are giving up on our lives, on our future. This man doesn't even believe in, in climate change. He won't even be able to fix that. He wants to go back into old gases and things like that that will mess up all kind of things. It's just, we can't. I don't know if it's because of his age. Some people think he's back in the 19th. I don't know what if he's back in the 1950s or not, but um, we can't go back there. We can't go back to the 40s and the 50s and the 30s and all the things that he brought up something from 1789 1789 so there's a problem there's a disconnect we're trying we're in 2020 something we're going into the future we want a better future and i'm going to say this and I don't want people getting mad at me because a lot of people are using this as an excuse for voting for criminal too, which is abortion. Look, that is not a good enough reason. First of all, the entire concept of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all of it is, it, it, that's a concept. That's a faith. It's the faith of a mustard seed, but it's faith, right? It's based on our belief system. It is not a confirmed valid thing. You realize that people, right? Because I feel like some people don't realize that. They will fight you about religion. And I'm like, this is all based on a concept of, of God. We have no valid proof. We just believe it because we're faithful. We have faith that it's true. We have this deep internal belief system that there's a God, that we were created. There's a creator. We believe this. I do. I believe in God. But what I don't believe in is that 
we should make decisions that would lead to other people's demise based on our own belief system in God. Because everyone who believes in God doesn't even believe it the same. The rules, the regulations, the laws, the, the things to follow, the commandments. I mean, there's the Ten Commandments, but there's nowhere in there except for thou shall not kill. Is there anything about abortion? And the thing is, since we're going to the point, and I, I actually think when I hear that, I'm more upset at people who are making the laws that are creating more actual deaths than those who are, have anything to do about abortions. Because those babies can't live outside of the woman. You're killing off the woman. That means you're the one who's killing. The side goats can't live without the woman or the person. The person is who's being killed, not the side goat. You know what I mean by a zygote, right? Because it's not even the embryo until a certain time. So you, you, these are people who are dying because they've got either broken up pieces of old leftover in them. I mean, let's keep it real. Real people are dying. You are killing. Thou shalt not kill. Real people are being killed from that ruling. They're being, it's basically murder. They're being killed. And these are people. These are not psychos or embryos. So thou shall not kill should extend to the actual human. It should extend to the human first. That's why I don't understand any of what they allowed to happen with the Supreme Court or with this abortion thing with Roe versus Wade, because now we're losing actual living, breathing humans, not zygotes that or uh, embryos that may not be able to live outside of the body of their host. They're nothing but really parasites until they're old enough to survive outside of the body of their host. And if they're if they're dead inside, then they're dead. Why would you leave that dead fetus inside that's no longer a viable human or anything that is alive? It's already dead. It, all of the things that are occurring are abhorrent and they are not Christian. They are not anything God would condone. You are allowing people to die over horrific thought patterns, over a belief system that I don't believe has anything to do with what he would want. He wouldn't want us to just kill our living people that are living, breathing, who have more opportunities to have more children later. That's not, that doesn't make sense. And can I say this also? This whole thing about it being good or bad or evil or whatever it, you might think about that, that is between that person and God. Because if you believe there's a God, then that's the person who makes the choice. Not us, not any of us living here. We're all on the same equal playing field. You're trying to play God over someone else's life. And that is not our place. You may feel a certain way about something. You may not like it. You might have your own belief systems. You might have learned things in church, have whatever. I don't know what it is you're thinking, but my goodness, at some point we have got to stop the idiocy and start doing what is going to save lives real lives, not side goats that couldn't even exist outside of the dead life. We've got to stop this. There is something horrendously backward and wrong about what I've been seeing. And no one's addressing that this is all based on a flimsy idea of a God that we don't even know is real. We just believe it with our heart. So you're making a decision over someone's life, over your belief system that could possibly not even be true. It's heartbreaking. So please don't come to me and ask me why I voted for Kamala, because I've already voted for her. In fact, I went straight blue. Why? Because I am not supporting anybody who could, first of all, get behind what I just talked about. And second, who can support that guy who is a criminal and a rapist and obviously unfit. Or any of the things they're planning to do with the Supreme Court. And 
any of this. I, I can't get that. It, it's to me the whole thing from the January 6th insurrectionists on uh, what I've seen in the House, what I've seen from Trump, uh, the, the, all of it. To me, it's completely and totally abhorrent on every possible level, on every level. It's abhorrent. It's like an aberration. It's an aberration. It's to me, it's insulting to our ancestors, to all the people who have fought for our freedoms, for our rights, for the civil liber liberties that we have. It's insulting to all of us. It's insulting to women that they want to make us second class citizens that we can't even make decisions over our own body or put our lives in jeopardy if we should get pregnant and it not survive. I lost a baby about six years ago, I guess it is six, eight, six years. <clears throat> anyway, I was old and it didn't survive because I'm old. I didn't, I just didn't have enough energy or life force or uh, vitamin for that baby. And if I had not had completely lost a baby, can you imagine if they could not do a DNC? The problem is that they are not giving out DNCs, which a woman might need a DNC for many reasons, but almost always, if it's tubal pregnancies, regular uh, 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 miscarriages, um, bleeding issues, there's so many reasons a woman might need a DNC. There's the seps, there's all kinds of disease and stuff. We got to stay clean. How are you going to take this away from women? I'm so disgusted. Men stay out of women's vaginal areas. You don't belong there. It's disgusting. One of the things that Kamala says is get the government out of, you know, our health care or whatever. You should not be discussing what's going on between a woman and her gynecologist. You should not. This whole thing is abhorrent. And the sooner we put an end to it, the better. The better. We are so much better than this as a people. This is not like we don't live in a third world country or do we because you're acting like we do you know trying to choose a dictator trying to treat women like the taliban like what enough is enough is enough is enough in america america is supposed to be the last place of freedom for you know, those who are tired and weary and need rest. That's what we are. And I pray that Kamala helps to bring us and restore that back. Somehow, some way, it got stupid. I Maybe it's because there was a stupid man running for office, but it got stupid. It got, to me, it's dangerously Um stupid like i always say there's idiocy afoot but it's decision making that that leads to her own detriment and that's why i don't get it like why make decisions that lead to our own detriment and i'm gonna just say this while i'm on a roll this is why i did not go live on uh tiktok because it probably would shut me down for i i can't i'm i've been silent i've been silent but we're like two weeks away now and I, I barely can't be silent anymore but black folks like the black men who have been voting for trump they all voting for man ain't got nothing for you nothing it is not going to be to your benefit for you to vote for that man it's not going to make a difference whatsoever in your life it's not going to be any betterment for you your family your offspring your future this is the guy who has the people of the KKK, the Nazis and white supremacists. That's who support him. That's who's behind him. When you support that too, you're on the same. It's almost like you're supporting your own demise. So I try to understand your mindset. But sometimes jumping on the bandwagon, you're on the wrong wagon. 
and that wagon might be taking you to your demise and i think some are on the wrong wagon and it's going to take them to their demise because there is nothing in that man's plan that is going to benefit you as a black man or a black female that's not his purpose that is not what he's trying to do have you read project 2025 if you haven't you need to take at least look at the clips of people who talk about it but to stay blind and dumb when we're just a few weeks away from a life-changing election that could change your life and future forever that could give him the opportunity to put in supreme court justices that might allow him to even re you know bring back slavery or something like that and you're going to vote for that that shows me the level of idiocy that you're at like you're not even protecting yourself you don't even understand where we are as a nation or why some of these people are voting for him or the level of white supremacy that's supporting him or you know nazis or kkk or whatever it's it's for it's horrifying i also invite you to go like i said to check out the midas touch if you don't know about it you might want to just check it out so you could start seeing what the other side is seeing and saying and some of the facts of what they're sharing because some right-wing media and even mainstream media are not sharing those facts so you may not be getting facts and you may be voting for your against your own self-interest and that can't possibly be good you need to vote at least for something that's going to be a benefit to you and your future and your children and your progeny uh, you know whatever what gets me is when even women like i don't get when women vote for him why not voting for it to be second class citizen i i don't get what is what why for what purpose why would you purposely avoid supporting women and supporting the man who's doing the most harm to women why what benefit do you get out of that what benefit is there in that that's why I don't understand it. I know it happens. I, 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 I see women, especially white women, man, they really, and, and I, I'm like, oh, okay. <clears throat> what are they voting for? What is, huh? what do they expect to happen? Like this guy doesn't have a plan and he's not ever he was a horrible president before so it's going to be worse this time what are you voting for my fear is that this is misogynoir from the men for sure um and that people are voting for a criminal who is unqualified and also twice impeached the last time shouldn't even be able to run again after being twice impeached let's keep it real but that people would even vote in that direction at all for any reason to me it's such an insult it's it's an insult to every american in my opinion and i'm i'm gonna end with that i i might do readings i don't know i'll record it separately i just had to get this off my chest i've been holding back on saying anything for days, for weeks, because I didn't want to say anything that was going to be negative or have people jump on me like they do on Facebook. They're always trying to attack me to darn MAGA. They're, I could just call them flying monkeys. They're Trump flying monkeys. Just like we said about narcissists. I told you the man's a malignant narcissist and he's got his flying monkeys. They are out there flying around doing his bidding and um but regardless i still don't see any value in why we should completely destroy our constitution and make a final decision like that over someone like him he's not worth it and we deserve better we deserve better we can do better if not now in four years so why end it 
and just stop there at the worst. Like, that's what gets me. Like, if it was a better opportunity awaiting us, I would be like, okay, let's choose him down and, and then we can hope for something better. But it's already bad. It's not going to get better. The, the best you can hope for out of that is Vance. And that's horrific. So there's no reason to go there. I, it doesn't offer us anything because it's so permanent. And with him having this absolute immunity or whatever, and what happens with our Supreme Court, we we can't get that back. It'll be like 20, 30 years, like 2050, 2060, before we'll ever be able to recover. We won't even be alive. We'll ruin it for our children. And I wish more people understood what they're doing. I think they're just, I like this one and I don't like that one. Or I don't like, I'm not going to vote for a woman. Or I'm not going to vote for a half black person. Or I'm not going to vote for a half Indian person. Or whatever they're doing. Or I, I thought he was funny. Or I liked the Saturday Night Live skits. Or uh, I liked him on The Apprentice. None of that has anything to do with us, our survival as a nation. We can't vote based on that. She is more qualified. She's the freaking vice president right now, and she's done a great job. And she has not caused an insurrection. So at this point, and she's not a great business that we know of. Anything they throw up against about her, it it it's it pales in comparison. It's going to be mood because he's done literally the worst you can imagine. He's an actual criminal. So we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect ourselves. We can't just succumb to this because it, the in crowd is saying to do it. Oh, it's a popular thing. Oh, I don't want my friends to dislike me. No one's going into that voting booth but you. No one's sending in your voting thing but you. No one knows what you've chosen but you. It's not a group project. This is an individual thing. You make your decision based on, on your choice. So there is no reason to, to tolerate that. We don't have to tolerate that. I, in fact, I'm praying that we get rid of this once and for all because I'm so exhausted of this man. I'm exhausted of his face. I'm exhausted of his voice. I'm exhausted of the lies. I'm exhausted of the lies, the cheating. I'm exhausted of his flying monkeys. I'm exhausted of the MAGA cult. I'm exhausted of the, the, the cons and the grifting and the lies and I'm exhausted of watching like the house uh, like debase themselves and give up their moral val values. I'm exhausted of watching the, the Republican Party disintegrate. I'm disgusted of watching mainstream media soft pedal around tr Trump and, and, and expect the world a la Kamala. I'm exhausted of this entire scenario and I can't wait for it to stop. stop. So we can just get this guy out of the picture because he'll be too old next time. And hopefully we'll find some new blood that will actually be qualified to be our president, regardless of party. But if we cave in now and, and, and select a dictator now with that, that's the dictator you want? Come on. Stop it. You know we can do better. We all know then you know, Von Shits and Pants, as Michael Cohen likes to call him. We all know better. We all know he's actually most likely guilty of everything he's been accused of. That's why he wants presidential immunity. Because he doesn't have any other defense. There is no defense. So please, people, please think wisely i feel like i'm begging right now like i've been begging for 10 15 minutes like please 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 open your eyes billy d billy d like open your eye i i gotta tell you something else if you hear me and you understand or agree with anything i've said please put your blue hearts up i love when i see the blue hearts it lets me know I'm dealing with a sane person who understands what I'm saying to a certain extent and is most likely on the same ship that I'm on because I'm not on that MAGA ship at all. There's maggots on that ship. I don't want to be on that ship. 
So when I see those blue hearts, oh my gosh, it just, it gives me hope. It gives me like incentive to come out and tell my truth because I realize one, I'm not alone and that there are other people who are feeling similar, if not exactly the same way I do and have the same opinions and thoughts that I do. And so share your blue hearts. If you see this somewhere, put your blue heart up there. I want to see your blue heart. I want, because that gives me so much encouragement to keep talking about whatever it is I'm talking about and doing whatever I'm doing. Anyway, I want to thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed my Halloween uh, transmission here with my red hair. And, you know, I just hope that whatever you do, you've made the right decision. Let's, I mean, just pray for us as a nation. I'll say this one last thing. Someone has said to me something to the effect like I, like I, I didn't know what I was predicting and what do I predict or what do I see when I see Trump or whatever like what what do my predictions say as an astrologer or as a, a reader or whatever and I just said and this is the truth because I have been saying this for years before this election since that last election when I look at Donald Trump's horoscope and when I feel it you know it's about feeling as well I see nothing but darkness there I see nothing but hot air. That's a Gemini with Leo rising, who is a fake. He's a complete and total fake. Geminis tend to be liars and fakes. They do. That's what they do. They like to pretend. They're good at that. They, you know, they can emulate things. They're, you know, and Le Leos are actors. They're pretenders. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot of talk. But they say talking loud and saying nothing. It's a lot of hot air. It's literally hot air. That's all he is. He doesn't, you're, you're not going to get anything. That's why he never had anything for uh, Obamacare. He, he never did. He doesn't have a solution. He still doesn't after all these years. He never will. It's not about him doing anything. He's only running to stay out of prison. He doesn't have a plan. He never did have a plan. He didn't have a plan last time. So we can't expect anything good. I will say this. I saw something where they were saying, oh, we have a, a national deficit to, that uh, we owe money or whatever. And I'm thinking when Trump left, we were $8 trillion in the hole. $8 trillion. I think they said we're at $4.37 billion or trillion right now. And I'm like, four trillion is, is a far cry from eight trillion. And so I'm good with whatever it, the heck is going on right now. They said since the last time, since 2021 or whatever. But I'm thinking, I'm not, that doesn't upset me because at least it's not eight trillion. I, I think is why would we ever go back to the worst of the worst? Why would we do it? I just, it doesn't compute at all. No matter what they say about Kamala or Biden, it, nothing that involves him computes to me because it's not going to be better. No matter how much you put them down, going to him is not going to make it any better. That's not the solution. <laughs> See, that's the whole problem. He's part of the problem. So going back to the problem is not going to be the solution. It's not. You're mad at them for not being able to fix the problem that he caused fast enough for you. And I'm thinking it's been less than for like three, almost four years, right? So you expect them to have fixed this problem that he he already created. But I'm thinking if you go back to that problem, it's going to be even worse trying to fix it later. We can't fix it if we go back to the same problem. Anyway, I hope whatever I said, because I'm just speaking from my heart right now, that whatever I've said during this transmission, that it hits the right ears, that it makes sense to the people who are hearing it, that you understand what I'm trying to say, and that hopefully you voted blue because you know better than to vote for something that is obviously dark and not the right road to go down. Anyway, this has been Adrian Capricorn Tigress of Astrology, Look Inside. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. 
and I'll come back and do some readings in just a little bit. Many blessings. Bye. Thank you.